A lot of you may know that Banjo-Kazooie is my favorite game of all time. Whether it's the 64 version or the Xbox Arcade version, I have a fun time playing it whenever I pick it up. And usually when I do pick it up, it means that I'm going through the game 100% again. Yes, it is a collect-a-thon, and yes, it is a 3D platformer. But it'll always have a special place in my heart. Not only because I love the characters and the music and the environments and the levels, but because it's a game that I can always go back to and just have a fun time playing. I can't say that about a lot of games. Even ones that I grant the game of the year to, sometimes I have trouble going back and playing them again. But Banjo-Kazooie was different. I could never get enough of this game. But the other side to this coin is Donkey Kong 64. Another game that I played a lot of back in the day. Donkey Kong. When I was a kid, I didn't have a guide. I didn't have the internet. I didn't have people in a chat telling me if I'm doing something right or wrong. I got through the game almost 100% without any help but my own childish mind. And even now I'm kind of impressed with myself, because I recently played the game on Twitch, and having to find some of the more off-the-beaten-path bananas was a bit difficult. Luckily though, I dug up an old Donkey Kong 64 official strategy guide, and found a lot of the bananas that I was missing. Essentially, I got 100% of the game done. Now, did I collect every single colored banana? No, but I did get all the golden bananas, coins, etc, etc. That equates to a lot of work. There are a few games on the N64 that ended up becoming my favorites even after all this time. Donkey Kong 64 fell out of my mind for a while, but I'm glad that I played it a few months ago. Going back to it was the best thing to happen because I was a bit fuzzy on some of the aspects of the game. Mostly the parts that people complained about the most, like collecting all different colored bananas. I had a different experience, and besides from a few bananas here and there that I had to go out of my way to collect, most of the game is centered around the concept of switching to other Kongs to do different parts of the games. I felt like the game flowed pretty well for an N64 era game, and it actually ran pretty smooth as well. The game did take a FPS dump, when a pirate ship started floating around the lighthouse in gloomy Galilean. But other than that, I had no problems with the game on the technical side of things. I really enjoyed finding all the different golden bananas, and most of the boss fights were really fun as well. Probably my favorite was Mad Jack, a demented jack-in-the-box who chases you around platforms that you need to jump between. You used Tiny Kong for that fight, and she was perfect for it. I really enjoyed how the fight changed throughout. Jack starts out by throwing fireballs and eventually goes invisible and shoots death lasers at you. I also really enjoyed the fight with Pufftas, a giant pufferfish who grows in size every time he takes damage. You play as Lanky Kong and you drive around on a boat through checkpoints to raise electrical rods out of the water. The fight works so well because it's a little bit different from everything else that you've been doing in the game. King Cutout was a funny fight where you shoot Kongs at a cardboard cutout of King K. Rule, which seems easy enough until he starts popping up randomly and you learn that you only have one chance with each of the Kongs if you miss. The final boss fight was, I would say, pretty epic, but also a bit confusing. I like the concept of having one Kong per round and doing something completely different for that round for each Kong. Diddy Kong, I love ya. But your Rocket Barrel Blast superpower in this game is super hard to control, and having to use precision aim with it is a bit of a chore. The levels are pretty fun. Besides from the one where you can turn day into night, that was a little bit no uh, annoying, but for the most part I had a really good time playing through these levels. Some of the levels did seem a little bare at times, where you go into the level and there's this big open area that has not much in it. But it wasn't too bad. Not as bad as something like ukulele, like the casino level. Um, yeah, you know what I'm talking about if you if you played the game. Luckily, this doesn't affect the fun factor of the game too much, and in the end, it wasn't a big deal to me. There was a mini game that caused me some problems, which took more tries than I'm willing to admit to get through. 
But most of the other ones are rather fun. There are two classic games you also have to play in order to get to the end of the game, which include the Donkey Kong Arcade game and a game called Jetpack. Jetpack is pretty simple. You collect rocket parts and, and fuel in order to complete the mission. But the Donkey Kong Arcade game is a bit different. You have to beat the game twice. Once on a normal mode, just to get a golden banana. And another time on a more difficult mode, to collect a special coin. Both of these coins must be acquired to finish the game, which adds a bit of a difficulty spike that I wasn't expecting. We got a slight avenue here. We got a slight avenue. Oh, fuck. Oh my god! Oh! Oh! We got through them after lots of practice, and I honestly wouldn't want to do that again. If there was one game I would recommend you to go back and try on the N64, besides from Banjo-Kazooie, I would probably choose this one. Besides from a few awkward camera angles, the game holds up pretty well, and if you go into it knowing you'll be collecting a lot of different colored bananas, you can plan your course of action and have a much easier time. Going through the game, I felt like the placement of the different colored bananas actually worked pretty well with the Kong changing mechanic in the game. I only had a little bit of frustration, funny enough, in the first level, when you break through a wall with Donkey Kong as a rhino, and there's several different colored bananas in that area, which is a bit of a hike to get to. All in all, I wasn't expecting going into this game to love it as much as I did when I was a kid, but I would say it's pretty much exactly the same experience I had when I was a kid. People complain about the camera angles and the collecting and blah blah blah, and I honestly didn't really find that big of a problem with it. The biggest problem I had was one single minigame. And if you know, you know. But for now, if you have the means to, I would recommend replaying Donkey Kong 64. You don't need an HD remake, you don't need a fan-made remaster. Just throw it into an old N64, and enjoy. And now, this. Donkey Kong 64, and you thought insanity was crazy. Heaven help us all.